Welcome to the NAHA webinar brought to you by the National Association for Holistic Aromatherapy. To learn more about NAHA, please visit www.naha.org. Tonight's presentation topic is Equip Your Child with the Tools for a Successful School Year. This educational webinar is being presented by Amy Emmett. Mnet, sorry, Amy. Amy is a certified clinical aromatherapist and certified natural health professional and owner of Blossoms Plus Blends Aromatherapy. And she is also a professional member of both Naha and AIA and is the Naha Regional Director from Missouri. Amy holds a bachelor's degree in education and has 14 years professional experience as a classroom teacher prior to becoming an aromatherapist. She is the mother of three energetic yet adorable children, ages 10 and under, who enjoy watching their mom live her dream of making potions and lotions to help others. To learn more about Amy, please visit her website at www.blossomsandblends.com. And I'd like to take a moment and welcome Amy for being here this evening on this really great topic, especially with some uh, children that will be starting to go back to school as early as the end of this month into September and also into September. So thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Kelly. Yes, my kids go back next week. So it's def definitely a topic on my mind. Um, the reason I did choose this topic was because it is near and dear to my heart. I started my official learning journey with essential oils as a means to help one of my children. So I was looking for a natural solution and aromatherapy kept popping up. And while I tried it before in the past, I wasn't very serious about it back then. But it kept popping up, so I decided to try it and ended up falling in love. So. I love working with children. As Kelly mentioned, I was an educator for 14 years, so children are um, hold a special place in my heart, and I am very passionate about safe use in children. So I decided this would be a great topic to discuss. Now, I plan on giving three different perspectives in this webinar. The first one being as an aromatherapist and a holistic health practitioner. The second, as a classroom teacher of 14 years. And the third, as a parent to three young children. Um, I have a 10-year-old, a five-year-old, and a two-year-old. So I've had a lot of um, experience with clients and also with my own children. So hopefully this can help you out as well. So let's go ahead and begin and talk about how to equip your child with the tools for a successful school year. All right, so the webinar topics. We are going to first discuss general safety guidelines regarding the use of aromatherapy in children. Now, this is really important because you'll see two totally different views when it comes to aromatherapy in children. You'll see the no, never, you should never use them. And then you'll also see the other extreme where you can use them however, whenever it's natural and it's safe. We're going to talk about the balance. We're going to talk about not all the safety guidelines, but enough to help you understand how you can use aromatherapy with your school-age child. We're gonna be discussing helping your child get a good night's rest, energizing the child who is not a morning person, supporting your child's mental focus, dealing with nervousness or stress-related problems. Now, this is a big one because in my classroom experience, these kids are under a lot of pressure at a much younger age than we had when we were growing up. So there's a lot of issues that need to be dealt with, not only academic, but social. So we're gonna discuss how to help those problems as well. And of course, we're talking about kids, we're talking about a school, so we have to talk about immune support. So let's go ahead and dive right in to some general safety guidelines. Now we are gonna be addressing the age group of five to 12 years old. Now, children younger than five require more caution, and children older than 12 usually have similar you know, guidelines, as, same as the adults. This webinar does not take into account things such as medications or medical conditions, so just be aware of that. Another thing we need to discuss is that children only need a gentle push to bring their body back into balance. 
the oils that I chose in this webinar are going to be simple and easily accessible. There may be some essential oils that can do very well with these topics, but I have found that children really don't need the strong essential oils to get the job done. So I chose gentle ones that are easy for parents to find. The next thing we need to discuss is to use essential oils with intention. Know what symptom you are addressing and the cautions for each essential oil you are using. A great thing to do is to involve children into the process. What I like to do with my own kids is when we have something we need to address, I take the essential oils that I know would help with these issues and I give them the caps of the essential oils to inhale and I check for their reaction. Now trust me, with kids, if they don't like the smell, they will not use it. Adults, we can kind of get by like, oh, it works, I can get past the smell. Kids, not so much. So you really need to make sure that they enjoy the aroma and also that they don't have any negative adverse reactions to it. Involving the children in the process is also a great tool to teach them about plants and the integral role that they can play in our health. And it's also important that when you discuss essential oils with your children that you discuss the fact that they should be kept away and they should not be easily accessible to them. It's not something they should just go and do on their own without parental supervision. Of course, it's not something that they should ever put in their mouth. And of course, this is something that they should be doing with their parents. So that's also just a couple guidelines you need to sometimes remind, especially the younger ones about. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about for general safety is that essential oils are complementary. Essential oils cannot fix everything. They don't always get to the root cause. So if your child needs medical attention, please consult with this physician. And also there are many holistic revenues that can be used besides aromatherapy and with aromatherapy. So I'm gonna be discussing kind of some different ideas along with aromatherapy in this webinar. All right, let's talk about inhalation guidelines for children. Now, inhalation is my preferred method for these issues we'll be addressing because it is safe, simple, and effective. You don't have to worry about dilution ratios and all the math that goes along with it. Simple, they can just inhale, and effective. A lot of these issues deal with the limbic system of the brain, and inhalation is the direct route to it. So inhalation will be what I'm going to suggest you try first with these issues. Now, inhalation can be utilized by aroma sticks. And aroma sticks, if you've never seen them before, they're that picture down on the left there. And what they are are like little tubes, and they have an organic cotton wick. Now, I would prefer organic because organic is, excuse me, organic, cotton is a heavily sprayed crop. So try to get the organ, organic cotton wick if possible. Now for children, we wanna use about 10 drops of essential oil or less onto the aroma stick. So what you would do is you would just drop it on the cotton wick, you would put it in the tube and put the cover on. Now what's great about these is that they're portable and they're personal. So you can just twist it off and inhale to use. Now, my children bring them into the classroom because it doesn't affect any other child and they can keep it in their backpack or they can keep it in their classroom desk. Now, I do wanna kind of make a disclaimer about general diffusion in the classroom. Um, some teachers ask me about that sometimes and I would say no. Children have different effects when it comes to aromatherapy. For example, lavender can be very stimulating to ADHD children, which is the opposite response that you are wanting. Some children might have allergic reactions to an essential oil. Some children might have um, just a, I don't like that smell. essential oil use in the classroom as personal. So this is a great way to utilize that is through an aroma stick. Also diffuser jewelry is another great choice. All you need is one drop on the diffusing pad. These could be necklaces, um, bracelets. Those are usually the two most common. 
And the great thing about the diffuser jewelry is you can't lose it. Uh, kids lose things. So this is a great way. It's on their body. So unless they play with it, it should stay on their body. And then they just need to bring it to their nose to inhale. So it's another personal portable way for them to use aromatherapy where they go. And the last way inhalation can be utilized is by intermittent diffusion. Now, I get a lot of people asking me, oh, which diffuser is the best? This one only runs for six hours. Uh, this one runs for 12 hours. You really don't need the continuous diffusion at all. For children, let's do 15, maybe 20 minutes on, and then take at least an hour off. Really, it only needs to be utilized probably two to three times a day for um, an issue. So let's do intermittent diffusion with our children and really for the adults as well. Now, kids love having a diffuser in their bedroom, so that would be great for you know, bedtime issues, or you can put one in the room where they're doing their studying or their homework, or in, you know, just in the general area where they're at. Kids love diffusing, and it's a great way to help them with the issues we're gonna be discussing tonight. All right, now let's go into topical use. I use topical use in children for acute localized skin, muscle, and joint issues. Now, as I said before, I do inhalation first, and if that isn't cutting it, then I usually go to topical use as well. Now with children, we always want to dilute with a carrier oil when applying. I mentioned a few of the carrier oils here. We have jojoba. Jojoba is a really good basic carrier. It doesn't have an aroma. It's a wax, so it doesn't need um, to be in the refrigerator, and it has a very long shelf life. We have coconut oil. We have fractionated coconut oil. That's the one where they have removed the scent of coconut, and it is pure liquid. And there's also the cold-pressed coconut oil, which does have the lovely coconut aroma. And that one does usually need to be refrigerated, especially in the summer months, because when it becomes too warm, it will turn into liquid. Arnica-infused oil is a great carrier for pain issues. We have calendula-infused oil, which is great for skin soothing. Now, I like to start off with the age group of five to 12. So remember, we're discussing those elementary and middle school kids. 1% is a good starting point. A 1% dilution is five to six drops of essential oil in one ounce of carrier oil. Now, for things like pain, start off at the 1%. If it's not helping, then you could bump it up a little bit more. But usually 1% is a good starting point. So let's get into our first topic now that we have discussed our general safety guidelines. And this is getting a good night's rest. The recommended sleep amount for children this age is variable between 10, 11, I've seen sometimes 12 hours. Now sleep is essential for students, not only to grow physically, but without a good night's sleep, they cannot concentrate. I saw that many times in the classroom. If they're tired, they're just not there. So there's a concept that teachers learn in education that says if a child's basic needs are not met, they will not be able to access their higher thinking and be successful in the classroom. So we need children to sleep well. One of the ways we can do this is by developing a routine. You're going to hear me talk about routine a lot because children thrive on routine. First thing with the routine is no screens close to bedtime. I would say at least a half an hour, probably more before bed. No TVs, no computers, no phones. Um, if for some reason your child um, is on the older end and does have a cell phone, have them turn it on airplane mode in the middle of the night because that can disrupt their sleep if that's on. Have them keep it in a different room if possible. Um, definitely don't put it near their heads because that can disrupt their sleeping patterns. Another one is to have their room dark. Um, I know some of the younger kids in the spectrum would enjoy the nightlight, but really a dark room is best. And a consistent night, excuse me, light out time. Now this is something that I'm very 
<laughs> very passionate about when it comes to routine because I've always had consistently good sleepers and people always ask me, how do you get your kids to sleep so well? Because probably from the ages from one to three, all three of my children have slept from 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. straight for years. And it's all because of the routine. I had it every night they went to bed at 6.30 at that time. And you notice when you start doing that, the kids automatically start getting tired beforehand. So if you are consistent with a lights out time, you will notice that their bodies will respond as well. Another important part is they need outdoor and active time in order to get a good night's rest. Kids need to burn energy. You ever notice how after a day at the pool or a day at the beach or just a full day of fun outside, kids are tired. I know that my older two who don't really ever nap um, will end up taking naps after a full day outside. So take advantage of that and do it as often as you can. They will sleep easier. Now, of course, it's not always great weather outside, so try to have some indoor options as well for them to burn off energy. I have um, a mini trampoline that I use for rebounding for myself and my kids use it to burn off energy, have them make an obstacle course throughout the house. There are many different ways for them to burn off the energy. Just make sure they have active outdoor time if possible. Another thing we need to think about is we need to use essential oils for assistance for sleep, not as a crutch. Now, a crutch is something you need to fall asleep. You are dependent on it. Now, we don't want to have our children dependent on essential oils to sleep. However, there are definitely times when the normal routine isn't working or you want to start the routine and you need them to calm down where essential oils can be very supportive. Just avoid using them every night once the routine is in place. And if you do use them on a consistent basis, please make sure to switch up the blends. Don't use the same essential oil consistently in order to avoid sensation. Now, the last thing I'm gonna discuss about getting a good night's rest is earthing. And earthing is something that can reset our circadian rhythms. Our circadian rhythms are sort of like our biological sleep clock. And before modern society, we used to fall asleep when it was dark and we used to wake up when the sun rose. And in order to kind of get that back into our system, we do something called earthing. Now, earthing is when you are barefoot in the grass and you face the sun setting. And this helps our bodies reconnect with the sun cycle and really get back on that, you know, day before modern day time where we used to sleep when it was dark and awake when it was sunny. So now this is something you can try to use with your children. I was, I'll admit that the first time I heard about this, I thought it was a little bizarre, but I've tried it and I've had clients try it and they've been pretty successful with it. So it's worth a shot, trust me. If you want your sleep, you'll try anything, right? So it doesn't happen right away. It usually takes about a week or two for it to really reset everything. So that's something that uh, you can definitely try. All right, let's get into the essential oils now that can help with a restful night's sleep. We have uh, Pettigrain, and this has a woodsy orange aroma with a little hint of floral. It is derived from the leaves of the bitter orange tree. The bitter orange tree gives us three essential oils, and another one we'll be discussing tonight, one of my favorites, is Neroli. That also comes from the bitter orange tree. Now, pedigrain is high in linalool and linalool acetate, and those are both um, give you a sedative effect, very balancing to the central nervous system. Now, this is a great one for a racing mind. Now, you may think that kids don't worry, but they do. Trust me, I have heard many kids at starting at the age of five, can't sleep because they're worried about something. So this is the great essential oil to use for that issue. It helps to reduce stress and reduce anxiousness. And it's great as there's really no safety precautions when it comes to using this with children. Another one is green mandarin. This has a very sweet and fruity aroma. 
It's derived from the fruit rind, which means it's very uplifting. It's the most calming of the citrus oils, and it offers great immune support, and it also helps to reduce anxiety. Now, kids love that it's green, too. They love seeing it in the diffuser, um, so that's kind of fun for them. And it's also a skin-safe essential oil that you don't have to worry about if you are going out in the sun if you use it topically. And of course, you can't talk about sleep without talking about lavender. Lavender has a very floral and herbaceous aroma. It's derived from the flowers. It's also it helps reduce tension. It's just very balancing to the body, not just the mind, but the whole body. It's you know an all-for-one sort of essential oil. Now, you don't want to use too much lavender because I've noticed that if you use too much lavender, it can be a little stimulating. And it's not always calming. As I mentioned before, um, ADHD kids can sometimes get overstimulated with lavender. So, and so you kind of have to see how it goes with your children, if it stimulates them or not. Uh, lavender is a great addition to immune blends as well. And there's no safety concerns. In fact, it's one of our baby safe, gentle essential oils. Next, we have Roman chamomile. This has an apple-like herbal aroma. It's derived from flowers. It's very soothing, harmonizing, relaxing when irritable. It's gentle and it encourages relaxation. Now, it's also, along with lavender, one of the very gentle baby safe essential oils. And it's also a great essential oil to use for tummy issues. So if your child has a little upset belly, it's great to put some diluted uh, Roman chamomile on it. It can help that out. Next, we have Atlas Cedarwood. It has a very light and woodsy aroma. It kind of reminds me of a pencil sometimes. It's derived from the wood. It's very grounding and anxiety relieving. It helps build confidence and helps to diminish fear. I use this one with nightmares a lot. It seems to help out, um, especially if they're afraid of the dark or even um, any kind of anxiety fear. This helps out tremendously. This is one of my son's favorite essential oils. It's a very child-friendly base note for a blend. Um, some of the base notes excuse me, base notes can be a little bit too um, earthy for their palate. So this is a one that they seem to resonate with pretty well. I also enjoy cedar wood for respiratory issues. So it's a good replacement for any of the harsher essential oils, um, such as eucalyptus. It's a great, um, great replacement for that. And then we have sandalwood. Sandalwood is soft, sweet, and woodsy. It's very quieting and serene. It promotes inner calming. It's good for tantrums. Now, trust me, any of you that have children of the school age know that tantrums don't stop after the toddler years. So this is really good for those times. It's also great for meditation. And I do want to suggest that you get your sandalwood from a sustainable source. Uh, luckily, we have recently um, had an influx of sandalwood over in Australia. So make sure you get it from a sustainable source. I like to use sandalwood during the witching hour. You know that, you know, mid-afternoon time where the kids are crabby, their blood sugar is low, they're irritable. I like to give them a nice protein snack at that time. And I also like to combine sandalwood with a citrus oil and diffuse it. It just seems to mellow them out. And it's just, sandalwood is just a beautiful essential oil combined with any citrus oil. The kids love those combinations. So we have a little recipe here for you. Uh, Sweet Dreams Pillow Spray. Now this is not topical. This goes onto the pillows or the sheets. And a base of two ounce grain alcohol. I chose grain alcohol, like 190 proof Everclear because that disperses the essential oils. Now, the alcohol will quickly um, evaporate. And since this doesn't touch the skin, it's a good choice. So you would do two drops of Roman chamomile, five drops cedarwood or sandalwood, your choice. 
six drops lavender, seven drops green mandarin. Or I also like to use Neroli Hydrosol as a great pillow spray. It smells great, kids love the aroma, and it's simple and easy. All right, next let's talk about energy. Again, I'm gonna talk about the routine. Uh, waking up every day at the same time is very essential for that circadian rhythm, that biological sleep clock. Drinking water first thing is a great way to hydrate. It helps aid in digestion. It jump starts metabolism and your organ systems. And what you wanna use is room temperature water, not ice water. Room temperature water is best for digestion. Kids need a breakfast with protein to sustain energy. Carbs get burned faster, so you need protein for it to stick so they don't get hungry. If kids are hungry at school, they're not going to be able to concentrate. So you want to keep with something that sticks. That also applies to any snacks that you bring to school. Make sure they have some sort of protein base and it's not carb sugar based. Now, if your child does wake up early enough to take morning showers, um, first of all, you're lucky. Uh, secondly, you can use a shower steamer with energizing essential oils to wake them up. Now, shower steamers are discs that are made from baking soda and citric acid. And what you do is I make the base and I add the essential oils to them right before they go in the shower. You set them on the shower floor and you do it past the drain so that way when it dissolves, it goes right into the drain for you and does not touch your body. And then the steam of the shower will release the aroma and the disc will dissolve on its own. Kids love these. And what's great is you can use soap molds and make them in all kinds of different shapes. So this is a great, um, fun family activity that you guys can do together is make the base and then keep a stack of shower steamers. And whenever you need them, drop the essential oil on before you use them. And there you go. And the last thing, of course, is exercise. You need to expend energy to have energy. So you need to make sure that your kid is active. All right, so let's talk about some essential oils that can help with energy. The first one is pink grapefruit, and this has a sweet yet tangy aroma. Of course, it has the aroma of grapefruit. It's derived from the fruit rind. It just really makes you wanna get up and move. I like to use pink grapefruit whenever I don't feel like cleaning my house. I diffuse that and it just kinda of gets me going. It's also good for those kids that don't want to clean their rooms. It's just really motivating. Um, it's very cheerful and boosting. It also makes you more alert. There is a caution if you do use it topically. It may cause skin irritation and it is phototoxic if used higher than 4%, which is 24 drops maximum per ounce. So 24 drops of essential oil per ounce of carrier oil. Pink fruit, grapefruit is also immune supportive. And then we have peppermint. Peppermint, of course, has the strong menthol aroma. It's derived from the leaves. It helps to reduce fatigue. It supports mental clarity. It stimulates the central nervous system. It's also a motivating one. And topically and inhalation, there are some cautions. It may cause skin irritation or mucous membrane irritation. So if you're gonna use peppermint in an aroma stick for a child, really one drop is all you need. That will definitely, it'll make its presence known, don't get me wrong. So one drop is usually sufficient. Now peppermint is a really good study aid as well. In fact, 20 something years ago, um, my first experience with an essential oil was using peppermint to study. I was a freshman in college and I'd read that peppermint essential oil helped with um, memory and studying. So I used it while I was studying and then I brought it with me when I was taking my exam. And so that's a good idea to use as well for maybe the older kids. 
Um, I prefer to use more grapefruit, and we're going to talk about lime next, but grapefruit and lime for energizing for kids, but peppermint is one that you can use as well. And speaking of, we have lime. Lime is one of my favorite essential oils, and that really surprised me when I got into this field, but I just fell in love with lime. It's very radiant, it's sweet, it sparkles, it's derived from the fruit rind, it's very energizing. It's one that I like to use a lot in my diffuser jewelry. Um, just one drop on the pad is all I need, and it just makes me happy. It's very uplifting. Uh, kids really resonate with it. Whenever I go through lime a lot, whenever I get a new bottle, my children are always like, did you get lime? Did you get lime? And then they, they want to come over and they want to smell it. So it smells like a lime popsicle to me, and I enjoy lime popsicles. So it just brings me back to that happy kid time or, you know, I, it's summer and you're eating your lime popsicles on the street. It's just very happy oil. Now the cold pressed version is phototoxic while the distilled one is not. I usually end up getting the distilled one and absolutely love it. All right, so we have a little wake me up recipe to motivate and awaken a child to use the following essential oils in your diffuser. And I am um, talking about an ultrasonic diffuser with water. You need to use three drops lime, two drops pink grapefruit, and one drop peppermint. And I would probably diffuse this in the waking up process. So that can hopefully drag your child out of bed in the morning. Next topic is going to be mental focus. Now, um, as I discussed with peppermint, you can use an essential oil for studying and then transfer it over while taking the test. So, for example, you can also diffuse lemon during study time, and then you can use an aroma stick with a lemon essential oil on it and bring that to the classroom. And it can help trigger their memory and help them concentrate. Now, I'm a big component of this idea that active bodies equals active minds. Now, when I was teaching, I had what was called an alternative seating classroom. Now, I pioneered the idea years ago, and it was funny because many teachers and parents thought I was crazy because I didn't have desks. I used stability balls in my classroom. I had music stands for the kids that wanted to stand, and my students were always moving. We were rarely just sitting down. There was a lot of movement going on in the classroom. Now, I found that every child benefited from this because when your body is active, your brain is active. Now, it was awesome to see these kids that had always had focus issues before being able to shine because they weren't drifting off by just sitting. So if your child has issues with mental focus at home, give them the opportunity to move. Um, let them run and play when they get home before they do homework time. If they're having issues at school, talk to the teacher about uh, using a stability ball or anything that they can get up and have a break for every now and then just to kind of get their mind and their body moving. And also brain breaks are really good. Um, I use those in the classrooms a lot where it was just five minutes of dancing just really kind of helps reset. So even at home, if you see that they're kind of struggling, get up, put on some music, five minutes of dancing, you'll be surprised at how easily they'll come back and they'll be better focused. Another thing is to have a homework routine set up. Again, routine. Um, designate a spot in the house to do homework. Let your kids decorate it, have them pick out the supplies, make it their own special area, and you need to have a set schedule. And what you need to do with the schedule is you need to have your homework time. And then after that, have something fun, something for them to look forward to. So you can say, well, once you get your homework done, you get to go play with Bobby. So that really helps them because they know what's coming up. And also it motivates them to get it over with 
and to go to the more fun things. Another thing that we need to um, utilize if possible is to break down into smaller tasks. Um, sometimes it can be pretty daunting for children to see, you know, if they have a lot of worksheets or something for homework. Just set a timer, maybe tell them to do 15 minutes and then they can stop and do the brain break or say, you know, do so many problems and then you could take a break. Just breaking it down into smaller tasks makes them feel more successful. Now, ADHD kids sometimes do well with stimulating essential oils. Just like, for example, um, if they are on pharmaceuticals, they prescribe stimulants. Same idea. Okay, now this is not every ADHD kid. I've known ADHD kids that do very well with the calming oils as well. But do know that sometimes stimulating essential oils will help them more than the calming ones. And if you do use the stimulating essential oils, just make sure to abide by the cautions because there are more cautions with those stimulating, stimulating essential oils rather than the relaxing ones. Another thing to think about is to teach practices such as meditation and yoga. I am very grateful that the preschools that my children and one of mine is still attending teaches yoga. It is amazing for their mind. It really can help teach kids how to focus. It can help train their brain to be calmed and centered and relaxed. Now, what I like to do is if the child is meditating or doing yoga is I like to diffuse an essential oil that resonates well with them. And then I like to put the same essential oil and transfer that over to an aroma stick or on the diffuser jewelry or whatnot. And it kind of just, this, the aroma, it triggers a relaxed state in them. So they feel like, oh, I, it just brings them back to that time when they were meditating and concentrating. And it just brings their whole body and mind back to that state. So now what essential oils then can you use? One of them is lemon. It has a very zesty and bright aroma, just like a lemon. It's derived from the fruit rind. Uh, Japanese research found that the diffusion of lemon essential oil dramatically improved mental accuracy and concentration. It's very uplifting and immune supportive. It is, the cold press version is phototoxic when used in a blend at more than 12 drops per ounce. The, um, the distilled version is not. Now, I like to think of lemon as a cleaning essential oil because I do use it in my cleaning, but also it just kind of wipes away the unnecessary distractions and helps a child focus in on the good stuff, the stuff they need to be thinking about. We have vetiver. Now this has a strong, earthy, almost musty aroma. It's derived from the roots. It's very centering and grounding. According to Ayurvedic medicine, it can improve concentration. It inspires wisdom. It strengthens the mind-body connection. Now this one is also a good one for sleep. It just kind of just settles you down makes you focus in on what you need to focus in on and even if that focus is sleep. So this is another dual purpose essential oil for some of our topics we're discussing tonight. And we also have frankincense. It has a balsamic and woodsy aroma with a little hint of lemon. It's derived from resins. It's relaxing yet not sedative. Um, it can help bring you down but won't exactly make you fall asleep, maybe for some people, but I found for kids, it doesn't really do that too much for them. It's very introspective and it's good for problem solving. Homework, this is a great one to diffuse during homework if there's something that they find difficult. It helps quiet the mind from distractions and it's very immune supportive. This is another great essential oil to use during yoga and meditation as well. If your child enjoys the aroma of frankincense alone, you can do that. I notice most kids like it better when I add a little bit of lemon essential oil to it. All right, so keep your eye on the prize blend. And this is to our aroma stick, so our organic cotton wick. Five drops lemon, three drops frankincense, and two drops vetiver. And they can take that wherever um, they need to focus. Now, emotional support. 
Now, kids can feel anxious, you know, it's the beginning of the school year, maybe they're starting in a new school, or maybe they're going to middle school, or, you know, it could just be that they have a new teacher. Kids can also feel very stressed out about grades or a test. Um, I taught first grade for 14, 13 in my 14 years, and I was amazed on how much more in those 13 years these kids are expected to do. So while teachers really don't have control over it, please know that they don't like it that much either. But kids can feel the stress, especially those perfectionist kids that want to get A's on everything. So they can definitely feel stressed about it. So here are some good ideas to help them with their emotional support, and then we'll talk about the essential oils that can help as well. One of the things is to have them journal their fears. The act of writing out a fear can help release them. What I like to have kids do is I like to have them rate their fear on a scale of one to 10. One being not scary at all and 10 being just absolutely terrifying. Then after they actually go to the event that they were afraid of, I have them go back and use that same scale, one to 10, of what actually happened. How bad was it really? And you'll find that their perception of the event is way worse than the actuality. And the kids will realize that too. Oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. By doing this over and over again, kids will start to realize it's not as bad as I think. And then they'll change their mindsets. Another idea is have them have a dry erase check sheet. Now, you can use just a regular dry erase board with a dry erase marker, or you can just put a piece of paper into uh, one of those sheet protectors, because you can use a dry erase marker on that, and it just wipes away too. So, okay, let's say, for example, um, the kid is afraid of going to the dentist, and they don't, um, they they don't want to go. So what you can do is you can write out the steps of what happens at a dental visit, and then have them go to the dental office with the check sheet, and after each event, have them check off what happens. Now, in doing this, the kids are familiar of what's gonna happen because a lot of fear when it comes to children stem from the unknown. They don't know what's gonna happen. They don't know what's going on. So this helps them know what's going on, and they feel successful, like, oh, I did that, that wasn't so bad. And so they can just put a check mark after each step. This just helps make the scary events easier to handle, breaking them down into you know, bite-sized portions for them. Come up with something that really resonates with your child. Have um, you know, a heart-to-heart -heart with them, and then once you figure out a short, simple sentence for them to keep repeating to themselves whenever they feel, you know, emotionally drained and need some balancing. Discuss the meaning of the sentence and then have them repeat that sentence while inhaling, uh, you know, an uplifting essential oil. So, for example, if they choose their affirmation as, you know, I am strong and um, smart, you know, have them, you know, inhale some neroli, saying I am strong and smart. So every time they smell that neroli, they automatically think in their mind, I am strong and smart. So make that connection between the essential oil and the brain. Another great one is visual cues for comfort. This was a big thing when I taught first grade, because you know, my guys and girls were pretty little and they were used to kindergarten and you know, first grade's a big step for them. So if you've ever read the book, The Kissing Hand, you kind of know where I'm going with this. Now, what a visual cue should come from home, and what you can do is, I used to have my students' parents draw a picture on their hand as a little reminder. So for example, if they're worried about something, you know, mom can draw a little heart on their hand or a little smiley face or whatever they choose from home. So that way, when the kid is feeling stressed, they can look at their hand and remember oh, that's from my mom, she says everything's gonna be okay. It's just very comforting for the kids, and it's also visual, because it's on their body, so that really helps them out through the day. So, now that we've discussed some ideas, let's talk about some essential oils that could help. We have neroli, one of my favorites, absolute, probably number one favorite, um, that in line. Neroli is a soft floral with a hint of 
orange. It's derived from the leaves of the bitter orange tree, like I said before. It's instantly calming to the nerves. It's uplifting, it instills peace into the hearts. It brings about feelings of love and connects with spirituality. And it's a little goes a long way. So it is one of the more expensive essential oils, but you don't really need a lot. I sometimes just open up the bottle and inhale it whenever I need to, and it just instantly brings me back down. It grounds me. It makes me feel, you know what, everything's going to be okay. Bergamot is another great one uh, for emotions. It's citrus with a little hint of lavender. It's very emotionally balancing. It's uplifting. It's encouraging and it instills confidence. There is a caution that it is highly phototoxic. Um, they do have the FCF version, which is not phototoxic, but if you do get the cold press version, it is highly phototoxic. So please, um, usually one drop in one ounce, anything more than that um, could cause a phototoxic reaction on the skin. We obviously don't want that for our little guys. So bergamot's a great choice. And one of the kids' favorites is sweet orange. It's fresh and citrusy, derived from the fruit rind, but it's just bright and happy optimistic and soothing to the anxious mind. Very good for, you know, anxiousness. It has a sedative effect when inhaled. It's immune supportive. And it just really is a favorite with young children. I really think I know maybe one kid that thought sweet orange was just okay, but the rest of them are like, oh, that smells so good. So it's one they really resonate with. It can be skin irritating, especially when it's oxidized. Now, this isn't an essential oil. This is um, a list of flower essences. Now, I'll quickly talk about what a flower essence is real quick in case you don't know. They are different than essential oils. I like to call flower essences the secret weapon of botanical healing because they're really underutilized um, here in the United States. Flower essences are gentle, energetic imprints of a flower that are stabilized in water. What they do is they help us to recognize and resolve and release emotional difficulties. And they're utilized usually by placing drops under the tongue or you can place drops into water or they can be used topically in a lotion or a cream. I also like to combine them with essential oils as well. Um, what's great about them is uh, they don't really have any safety concerns. Like essential oils, there's a lot of different safety concerns where flower essences, you don't see those issues. Um, they're pretty much safe for everyone. And one thing that you should know is that they do not have an aroma. I get asked a lot, you know, can I diffuse it? And I'm like, well, I mean, you could, but it's kind of a waste because you're not going to smell anything. So um, you combine it with an essential oil and diffuser. I do that a lot. but um, I wouldn't diffuse them on their own. I would really stick to um, putting them in the water or under the tongue or using topically. All right, so here are some ideas for some emotional issues that children might have and a uh, flower essence to go along with it. We have for low self-esteem, they could use larch. Overwhelmed with responsibility, especially those older kids that just, you know, going into middle school, this would be a really good one. Um, elm is a good choice for that. Feeling needy and wanting affection. Um, those can be especially those, I, I have a little one going into kindergarten next week. So, um, you know, that could be probably that age where they just really, you know, I want my mommy, you know, this is kind of scary sort of thing. So Heather flower essence would be great for that. Shy and wanting to be alone, just kind of, you know, feeling lonesome at school, not really wanting to talk to people, especially going to a new school, they might have that issue. So water violet's really good for that. Uh, feeling exhausted and drained would be olive, you know, those kids that, you know, kids are in a lot of activities nowadays, um, sometimes it can be overwhelming and tiring, so that's a great flower essence for that. Uh, feeling like he or she can't control his or her emotions, that would be cherry plum. The ones I uh, mentioned here are all Bach uh, flower essences or flower remedies, they're also referred to as, and um, so you can find those in any of the Bach um, places that sell Bach. Okay, so we are going to discuss immune support. And of course we can't, as I said earlier, we can't talk about kids without talking about germs and how to deal with those kids that get sick all the time because other kids are sick. Uh, one thing that I think it's important to note is that we need to avoid over sanitizing. 
Now, hygiene is good, don't get me wrong, but too much, not so good. Now, scientists have actually found that kids that are have less tidy environments end up with a lower risk of sensitivities to substances. Exposure to dirt and microbes allow the immune system to differentiate between harmful and harmless irritants. If you use too many antibacterial soaps or hand sanitizers, what happens is your immune system becomes more sensitized to any irritant that comes its way. So anything that comes along, all of a sudden it thinks it's an invader. So there's obviously we need to practice hygiene, but we don't need to instill that our children need to be always washing their hands, always using hand sanitizers everywhere they go. And you know what? Let them play in dirt. I love having my kids just go out in the backyard or in the woods or something, just getting dirty. It's great for their immune system to do that. And you know what? Since, you know, I kind of let go of the whole having to, you know, don't mess up your clothes. You know, I don't want you dirty, blah, blah, blah. My kids have been much healthier. So avoid the over sanitizing. And of course, with immune support, elimination of waste within the body is key. Now, waste can be eliminated through the bowels, the urinary systems, lungs, lymph, and skin. And of course, exercise helps remove waste to good nutrition, helps the removal of toxins as well to kind of get their digestion going to help their bowels. So immune support is really, you know, about not only using things like essential oils and, you know, herbs and stuff like that, but it's really the core things, the, you know, eating well and moving and sleeping, all these things help. So all these, you know, steps need to be taken in order to have a good immune support. Probiotics are huge when it comes to immune support. And it also is huge when it comes to mental focus, because our, you know, our gut is our second brain. So if you have a lot of digestive issues, usually you'll have a lot of difficulty when it comes to concentration as well. Nearly 80% of your immune system function resides in your gut. So you are what you eat. It's very important to realize that. Now, what I mean when I say probiotics, um, you can have your, if your child will eat it, fermented foods such as sauerkraut. Um, there are drinks such as kefir that they can drink, um, and you can also take a probiotic supplement as well. They have one specially formulated for children. Also, edelberry syrup is great, especially in those winter months where there's a lot of coughs and colds going around. This is an herbal syrup that you make with honey. You can make it yourself. That's what I do, um, but you can also buy it in the store if you'd like. It's a little bit more expensive that way, but you know sometimes it's better if you don't have enough time. And of course, we need to talk about nutritional support. You know, in the winter months, we kind of want to stick to the comfort foods. So we need to make sure we add um, green, leafy veggies, spinach, kale, try to get a lot of those good vitamins and nutrients in their systems that can help with immune support. All right, so essential oils that can help with immune support in children. Hoewood, another one of my favorites. It's a floral with a sweet woodsy aroma. It's derived from the wood. It's very high in linalool, which stimulates the immune system and has strong activity, activity against some bacteria and fungi. It calms the nerves. It's tonic to the body. It helps support and strengthens over. Now, um, what's great about this one is there's really no safety issues as well. And it's um, a, a very nice aroma. I love Hoewood. It's beautiful. We have Rosalina. And this is warm, earthy, herbaceous aroma. It's derived from the leaves and the twigs. It's also known as lavender tea tree. A lot of people prefer this to tea tree because it is more of a pleasant aroma. Um, I personally enjoy tea tree. I'm one of the very few, apparently. But um, Rosalina is a great alternative to that. It's also high in linalool, so that immune support I was talking about with Hoewood. And it's got a touch of 1,8-cineol, and that 1,8-cineol just really kind of gives it the, um, the extra oomph it needs to get the job done for immune support. It has great anti-infectious properties, and it's great for kids' respiratory systems. The 1,8-cineol um, in the Rosalina is not one 
there's not a high content of it um, where you would have to be worried about a lot of issues like you would with the younger kids. We have thyme chemotype linalool. This has a soft herbal aroma. It's derived from the flowers and leaves. It's an airborne antimicrobial. It stimulates the immune system and it's gentle yet effective. Um, the caution on this one would be a 1% dilution in a topical blend is recommended. Now you need to make sure you check the chemotypes um, when it comes to time because there are some um, that aren't the best idea for children. We want to look at the linalool as the great one for children. We have Palmarosa, which is fresh, rosy. It's almost got a powdery aroma to me. It's derived from grass. It's an airborne antimicrobial, immune stimulating, anxiety relieving, and has a maximum dermal dose of 6.5% according to Robert Tisserand. And that's because of its adrenal content. This is also great antifungal for kids as well. And then, of course, uh, we have any of the D-limonene oils. These are great ones to activate your white blood cells. They stimulate the immune system. And then I listed here the essential oils that are high in it. I like to any immune, cold, any kind of, you know, not feeling so hot sort of time where I need to make a blend. I always like to add a citrus in it when it comes to kids because of the immune support that, you know, the citrus oils brings. And also it's an aroma that is familiar to the child and that they very much enjoy. And then we have perfect attendance blend. And so if you're exposed to something, you can try making this master blend. Now, what a master blend is, if you don't know, is you're gonna take a five milliliter stock bottle and then you're just gonna use it when you need to. So when you do need to, you can use five or six drops in a diffuser. So you wanna use 30% lemon essential oil, 20% palmarosa, 20% lavender, 15% rosalina, and 15% thyme chemotype linalool. And that can help them really try to fight whatever they've been exposed to. Now remember, again, diffuse 15 minutes, 20 if need be, two or three times a day usually will be able to help them out tremendously. All right, so that is my presentation. I am so happy you guys were able to attend. I really hope that this can help you and your kiddos out to have a great school year. And I really hope that your child uh, blossoms and thrives in school this year because it's just amazing as a parent to see a child just you know grow so much so here's my contact information if you um, need to contact me uh, website Facebook page I just started the Facebook group um, not too long ago email and I do have a free five-day email safety course for anyone and anyone that wants to take it so thank you very much thank you Amy wow that was a wonderful wonderful presentation and while I was listening I, so many great ideas that you did when you were teachers. It's wonderful. I loved it. And I was thinking that besides the fact of parents, when they have to go shopping for all these back to school supplies, they will maybe now need to add to their list a little bit more and get some back to school supplies, like a little inhaler, a little aromatherapy jewelry and some essential oils to use for their kids too. So, so we really appreciate you being here tonight and, giving a wonderful presentation um, to help parents with their children. So thank you very much. Oh, I loved it. Thank you.